Okay, and, and uh, thanks Yuan for the presentation. Regarding the first part, the backscatter communications. So from Yuan's uh, detailed presentation, we have two key messages. So basically for backscatter communications and the system, uh, they have a very low power consumption. So nearly passive uh, transceivers, we don't need a signal generators and also we don't need a lot of processors to uh, receive and uh, transmit the uh, RF signals. The only power consumption is mainly due to the uh, modulation for the MCU, some micro power units. So then the topic number two, we are going to cover uh, the RF wireless power transfer and harvesting. So first of all, um, we want to make sure what is the RF energy harvesting and the WPT. Uh, basically in this figure, uh, we can see uh, there are many sources of power we can utilize for the renewable source to power the backscatter communications or other low power devices. For example, the power from the sunlight, the solar power, and then the power from the local heat generators from your car engine and from a vibration source, uh, some moving uh, objects. So we can collectively uh, uh, harvest energy from those. And for the uh, energy from the electromagnetic waves, uh, this is also harvestable because uh, it, it is a rapidly evolving area. We have a lot of um, cellular and the, the wireless systems for the 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G, and 6G. And also we have the, the Wi-Fi and a lot of local uh, wireless line and the, the wireless systems. And in the comparison for uh, the energy sources uh, with solar and thermal and vibrations, the radio frequency power source, typically uh, we have a very low power density. Uh, so in comparison to the solar power, in, even for the indoor light, uh, the RF power radiated from the ambient source, for example, your radio tower, your Wi-Fi router is typically have uh, much more magnitude order lower than that. So typically 60 dB lower. And uh, But if we, from the other standing point of view, the RF energy compared to the other source of um, type of source, uh, we have a relatively stable uh, source for generation. Uh, we, uh, it is quite independent to the weather conditions, to the time conditions, and also we don't need a particular kind of thermal and vibration source for generation. Uh, so if we list uh, the Texas instrument, the company, they have done a quite large survey for the RF powered possible devices. If we list the device power consumption as a function of this uh, kind of drive, drive power, uh, we can summarize that the RF power may be not sufficiently to power some very high consuming devices like your smartphone, uh, even your headphones, but for some very low power devices like your watch, your smoke detector, uh, tiny sensors, backscatter modulators, it could be an option because the power consumption for the steady operation for those devices is, is typically in the range of uh, tens or hundreds of megawatts. And then the RF energy harvested from the ambient radio uh, spectrums uh, is uh, if you accumulate using some system to uh, accumulate the power, then it is sufficient to drive those kind of low power devices. And secondly, we want to know how can we efficiently harvest the RF energy. Uh, the typical device to harvest the RF energy, uh, we need a system. The system consists of an antenna. The antenna is, is the device to receive the uh, RF power. So like you use antenna to receive signals, in the meantime, the power from the signal also being converted from the open space into your circuit by using an antenna terminal. And then the power will be delivered to a circuit system. The circuit system we call the typically rectifier. The rectifier from this down figure also displayed on our paper. Uh, it will convert the uh, alternating signal from a number of frequencies into the DC. Uh, in, that, in that scenario, uh, then we can uh, leverage uh, power management or the storage system to make the power be utilized uh, by ha having some uh, storage or kind of um, managed system. And then to charge the backscatter uh, system, uh, in this figure on the left hand, right hand side, uh, we'll give an example. So uh, like Yuan presented, if we rely on the outdoor long range uh, lower system for the backscatter scatter communication, at the local gateway, we have a lot of backscatter tags. And at each tag, the only power consumption is due to the processor for uh, switching the 
target impedance and also do the modulation at the uh, very low power consumption. And in this occasion, those targets can leverage the power from the uh, available RF power sources, for example, from your uh, nearby base station, or even from your personal devices, your laptop, your iPhone, or your uh, device who need an uplink signal to report your uh, information. And then those power, once efficiently harvested, and then the power would be uh, used to power the backscatter tax in, uh, and then eventually can produce a battery list, a uh, sustainable operation for all the tax and all the uh, nodes uh, based on the backscatter. And uh, for some RF harvest examples, uh, because uh, we know that uh, in our previous slides, the uh, power density for the ambient RF power is typically very low. So there are some strategies to enhance the power harvested from the uh, low density ambient uh, source. So one example uh, we selectively print here, present here, is uh, we use a multi-spectrum wideband direct antenna. Uh, so this means even the, um, the power is low, but we can integrate the low power as a function of frequency. We can receive the power from different spectrums and systems. And in this, in this occasion, we can integrate the power uh, from different frequency band and generate a single DC source. So this work was done by the people group in the University of Liverpool in the UK and uh, demonstrated a wideband rectangle to absorb uh, the power, especially from the low energy indoor environment. And from a live demonstration, uh, we can see that uh, when we establish a um, harvest array, we have uh, four unit cells and then some simple power manual circuit, not in the IC, in the distributed breadboard. And then we can measure the uh, instantaneous power harvested from the, uh, the kind of rectangular array. And then through the circuit, uh, the power can be effectively stored in a supercapacitor. Uh, so this proves the uh, harvest energy from the ambient low power density environment it can be used by some special applications, especially in this webinar, we are talking about the backscatter system. And then there are also other examples provided by different researchers in the world. For example, this work was produced by researcher collaboratively uh, between the uh, Italy, the University of uh, Peruga, and also Professor Manos, also in this room, uh, the Georgia Tech. So they produce uh, a uh, flexible on paper multiband rectangle. So they use inkjet printing technology. And then similarly, this device, the harvest, uh, they can cover from the results, they cover a uh, different uh, frequency spectrums. And then all the power from those spectrums uh, will be integrated into one output. And then you can drive the low power sensors and the low power backscatter nodes. And another method, another strategy, in addition to having a multiband or wideband receiver, is we can increase the special coverage or we can have more special diversity. The special diversity is like when you have a lot of antennas and the antenna can deploy in the space in different angles. And then from the uh, open space uh, point of view, you know, the antenna become a more efficient absorber. When you have more antennas, then the energy will be accessible from a more access point. And then the effective aperture and the overall coverage of the harvester will be much more uh, better compared to a single element. So this work uh, was produced by researchers from France and also from the Canada the University of Montreal to demonstrate a multi-element single frequency uh, low power harvest. And uh, some applications also has been demonstrated by using the RF energy harvest. So for example, uh, uh, the researchers uh, uh, collaboratively between my, my group and the uh, people in uh, China Central University and the Hong Kong University of Technology, we uh, demonstrated um, uh, a multi-element uh, harvester based on the Vivaldi antenna array. And then uh, we have multiple elements and also multiple bands. And in this occasion, the uh, harvest power will be uh, increased by uh, a kind of uh, a, a magnitude order higher compared to the conventional one. And then uh, we utilize um, a kind of uh, power management IC system. So the IC 
will convert the uh, dynamically changing input uh, DC power harvested from the ambient environment into a stable, uh, useful uh, voltage or DC power to charge some sensors integrated on the board, like the temperature and the humidity sensor for the indoor environmental sensing. So this is one example. And another example is uh, demonstrated for by the researchers from Portugal, uh, Professor Nuno Cavalli's group. Uh, they use the, the incoming wave from the ambient RF power to charge the backscatter node. Uh, so the strategy here is mainly uh, they use the power divider uh, they establish two branches. So one branch uh, will be used for the uh, power conversion. So basically the power from the antenna received will be converted into the DC. And another branch will equally split the power to a backscatter modulator. So as introduced by Yuan and the, our paper, you will find that the backscatter modulator uh, is most likely a transistor or a low power switch. And the switch can play with um, MCU, can control, is uh, digitally controlled the uh, frequency of the switch. And the, uh, the MCU will be powered by the output from the rectify. And in this case, uh, establish a closed loop so in this work, as I demonstrated, when the power is uh, about minus 10 dBm, then the whole system would be fully sustainable without additional power. And also another work demonstrated by the same group uh, is they used a different frequency. In this case, they don't need a power divider. Uh, they use a 5.8 rectangle array to receive uh, the uh, RF power as a kind of power wireless receiver. And at the back circuit side, this will be managed similarly using our uh, DC to DC converter and the power management unit. And the output power uh, is used to charge a backscatter module, uh, but at a different frequency. So they eliminate the need for this kind of power divider and can save more energy harvested from the device. And uh, these are the uh, basic concepts for the uh, harvesting energy from the RF and how to use it to power the backscatter nodes and the backscatter radios. So I will hand over the presentation to Dr. Alin for the more advanced uh, backscatter demonstration. So I will stop my sharing.